Um, as I mentioned, we have 28 companies in the alliance this year, um, and they are in the alliance because they are interested in having conversations with you beyond their logo and beyond their booth number. We, the, the Printiverse is an opportunity for everybody to meet the people and meet the companies and get a little um, insight into their culture, into their vision of the future, so you can make the best decision on the companies that you want to work with beyond just their products and services, which is very important because you're buying into a company, you're not just buying into a press, as we, as we say. So, Sarah, are you here for, to speak for HP? Okay. Um, without a doubt, HP has been one of the biggest uh, supporters of the Printiverse. As a matter of fact, if it wasn't for Sarah, none of the aliens would be here, yes, uh, be blown up. I had a little air pump problem yesterday, and I found out that an Indigo has an air hose on it. So the HP Indigo blew up all of these aliens, and it was quite a scene in the booth yesterday. So um, the 80 aliens, I wanted to put a sign inflated by HP. So thank you, HP, for allowing me to uh, use your hoses, so to speak. And um, why don't you come on up here, Sarah, and we'll just have a little conversation. So Sarah Markfield, everybody, from HP. So what we're doing right now is just sit here. What we're doing right now is we're just going to have a conversation. I'm calling this movers and shakers uh, to meet the members of the alliance. And the alliance companies are not randomly chosen. They are strategically chosen because there is something bigger picture on the table as far as how we can all create more relevant communications, more uh, key print um, as topical and, and uh, valuable. I don't like to say relevant because I always think print is relevant. But um, Sarah's here from HP. Why don't you tell uh, people a little bit about who you are and what you do for HP, and then um, we'll have just talk a little. Sounds great. So as Deb mentioned, I'm Sarah Markfield. I am the communications manager for the graphic solutions business for the Americas region. And I work on all of our business lines that fall into that portfolio, which would include Indigo, Latex, DesignJet, Cytex, um, PageWide, Excel. So it's a very large portfolio of products. And I kind of oversee all of our communications on all of those. So is HP doing anything? Did you bring any new technology to the show? We have some newer technology that we're showing here at the show. Um, the Latex 3600 was recently introduced, as well as the Latex 570. And those are wide format they printers? They are wide format printers. And um, we both have both of those machines on display here. And we are going to be printing samples throughout the show, some beautiful imagery and some pretty cool media that um, is just very dynamic. And our sample displays are really what you should, what people should come and see in our booth. Right. So HP is, um, I mean, I go to a lot of print shows, and um, HP's booth is definitely where I would say is one of the Printspiration um, destinations on the show floor. Thank you. Um, whether or not um, you're interested in that technology, quite frankly, that is just an idea factory waiting to happen, uh, walking in through, hey, you got antennas, you must rank. Um, so um, you should definitely just walk by there just to uh, see some really cool examples of direct mail and print that um, yep. people out there are doing and basically steal, steal the ideas, <laughs> go back to your customers and say, I saw a great piece of print and you should do it. And that's really how yeah. it happens. So if I might, Please. Um, we have a huge sample display in the center of our booth. And we've broken the samples into three categories, lead, in engage, and innovate. And on top of those words, which are literally what these samples are put on, you can see different examples of leading campaigns, innovative campaigns, or campaigns that engage. And we have them from all of our segments, from labels and packaging, direct mail, publishing, you name it, across the board, we have examples of what you can do using HP technology, whether, and it's, again, across the entire portfolio. So, um, movers and shakers is about pushing the industry forward. And I do have a relationship with HP, so yep. I would want you to talk a little bit about the new um, inks that are, not in yep. a technical standpoint, but in a, in a this is what's coming standpoint. 
uh, if you'll start there, sure. and um, also the kind of investments you're making in, let's say, specialty printing. Okay, so let me start with inks. So we do have some pretty cool examples of new inks on the stand. We are showing fluorescent pink. I believe they're going to be running fluorescent orange and green as well. Um, they were setting up for that yesterday. I don't know when they're running them on the various presses, but we also have um, black light boxes so you can see what the samples look like in, under the black light and get that um, impact of the fluorescent inks. Um, there is an example of a future technology, which is silver ink, which they're showing um, on our roll fed presses. Um, I think that's it for the specialty inks, there is definitely specialty printing too. So examples that you might see in our lead, engage and innovate area will be raised printing, um, emboss, deboss, uh, printing on metallic um, media, which there's a beautiful poster um, of a particular soup company can that you might recognize that was done on metallics that's just incredible. Um, I saw it yesterday for the first time and I was blown away. There's uh, some other examples, uh, jellyfish that we have mounted that just, it looks like you are under the water because the metallic ink sparkles so much, but the white ink makes the colors more vibrant and stand out. So they're just amazing examples of what you can do. So if you were to um, evangelize, hello? Hi. If you were to uh, evangelize HP for a moment, technology, and look into the camera and talk to the printers that you want to attract um, as far as to come to your booth or to go to your website, like who, who do you want to have conversations with? We want to have conversation with, conversations with anybody in the print industry mm -hmm. because our portfolio ranges across so many platforms from um, entry level wide format all the way to high production inkjet web press uh, where we have examples of that in the booth as well. We don't have one of the machines, but we have, certainly have um, information on them. We have our whole team here, and everybody should come by. I mean, there's, we used to talk about, there was nothing that we couldn't print, from postage stamps to building wraps and everything in between. And I've been at HP for quite some time, and so I might uh, get some flack for pulling out something from the old days, but I would say it actually does summarize very well what we do. Um, and everything in the booth was printed on HP. So that also gives you an idea of just how involved we are in our own technology. Um, and I will actually say, if you drive down Michigan Avenue while we're here in Chicago, there's another HP event going on where um, the H all the windows in the Hilton Hotel on Michigan Avenue are done in cling that was printed on HP technology. And every sign for that event was also printed on HP. So. It just even walking around the city, you'll see examples of what can be done. Thank you so much, Sarah. And uh, HP is having a, a coffee yes. event on Girls Who Print Day on Tuesday, which everyone is more than welcome to come to. And we're not saying exactly what is going to happen here, but we are calling it a historical moment because something that has never been done before in the print industry will actually happen in this booth. Ironically, yes. Um, well, not no. This is the place for something that's never this, happened yes. before. <laughs> but um, I don't want to get all crazy. But um, you know that HP pretty much plucked me out of obscurity and started taking me around to shows. And because you did, other people said, "What? Well, what is she doing? Who's that person with HP?" And um, some of your partners are actually in the booth, and I work with them now too. So. My undying gratitude always um, to HP and thank loyalty, you. and thank you personally thank you, for everything personally. you do. Every time you people out there ask me for a question about HP, this is the person I go to, and then she asks everybody in HP. So thank you so much. Thank I you. really appreciate it. And we'll see HP on lots of panels uh, yes, during the Printiverse. Definitely. So thanks. You can go. And we'll thanks, call Sam. up Dave from Muto. Yay, Sarah. Dollar, did you bring your business cards? Did you follow your, did you your instructions? All right, give one to Sandy. I see you, I see you little, I see, I see you. From Avatar, I see you. Dave, yeah, you can if you want. See all these lovely banners in the booth, ladies and gentlemen, Muto, everybody. Prints them for me every year. And I drive them crazy about it, but it was actually a good, pro nice process this year. Yeah. Oh, we love it. Thank you for letting me use your equipment. Thank you for loaning me your equipment. 
Awesome. Remotely. It's all, it's all good. We love it. So, Dave, you've been friend of Printiverse for six years or now. Yep, six years. And we've seen you develop. You started as a lowly little salesperson, <laughs> didn't you? And I now did. what is your new title? Uh, Director of Sales and Marketing for uh, North America. Now, I'm not saying the Printiverse had anything to do with that, but you did get those promotions while you were exhibited, well, partnering with us, didn't Very you? Very coincidentally, but yeah. Very so coincidentally. So, you know, for all of you aspiring alliance people, you know, it's a career opportunity. So, wide format. Um, wide format and software and, quite frankly, global commerce might be the three most topical subtopics of this conference. Um, the big overall theme is grow your business, but how do people do that? And honestly, as you know, I'm one of those people that doesn't understand why every print shop does not have wide format equipment. I mean, to me, it's a gateway drug mm -hmm. to, to so, many, so much more opportunities uh, with your current clients and the ability to uh, get into new markets. So why don't, let's talk about first, um, What's going on at MUTO? Uh, you just won some awards, I, I noticed. So yep. let's talk about that and any new technology that you have at the show. Yeah, we did. We uh, are coming off of uh, being awarded the SGIA Product of the Year Award for yep, two of our um, uh, UV LED printers and one of our, um, 16, it's a 1638X. Um, it's an eco-solvent printer that took the uh, award for uh, under $100,000 eco-solvent or latex printing. And we have the 1638UH, which is the hybrid UV printer in the booth, and that took home an award, two awards actually this year. Uh, we're printing on board in the booth, and then a little 626 is a desktop um, UV printer for specialty items, um, printing materials up to almost six inches thick. So those are both in the booth as well. And where, where, now you also print other, other stuff besides like the traditional, what people think wide format, the beyond these banners. Right. As a matter of fact, my mother is addicted to your uh, <laughs> luggage tags. Uh, can't so get enough of them. She can't get enough of them. So what, what kind of applications are you, what are those stranger applications or the, the unexpected applications that are now possible through wide format technology? Well, traditionally, I mean, there's, there's just a plethora of different applications. We always come to shows and we find people coming up asking if we can print on candles, if we can print on different materials or substrates. And sometimes we know the answer and sometimes we don't know the answer to the question. So we'll let them go away. We'll take the uh, sample that they took and we'll we'll see if it works and we'll find out while we're, we're printing. But um, on the eco-solvent side, you know, kind of going back to, you know, bridging that gap from the pre-press uh, environment to going wide format. And it's something that we've been talking about forever. You know, just like screen printers going digital, pre-press adding digital to the uh, workflow. Most printers obviously have proofing devices. They're small format proofing devices. They're looking at getting the wide format. We offer in two things that um, we can talk about or we didn't mention is, the only two certified um, wide format printing devices that are G7 um, certified through the Ideal Alliance. So for those folks who own a, or in a press shop or own a pre-press shop or are looking to get into digital printing, we have a wide format printer, 64 inch wide printers that take the spot of the approver because it now can also be a proofing device and it can really? get you into the wide format printing arena That's as well. Cool. So one printer does the work of of you know what they typically look at having to bring in two printers so cool man yeah so what what do you think is um what is the future of wide format as far as muta uh muto is is seeing it and what is the uh what is the markets that you think are the most viable for the technologies um it's always been bigger better faster and right now you know the faster has kind of been achieved you know we're kind of maxing out so what we're branching out into different applications. Muto splits up the uh, printing technology by ink technology. So you got eco solvent, you got UV or specialty, you have dye sublimation and direct to textile. So we have printers, there's 22 different printer models that fit those different ink technologies. So depending on the market space that you either serve or that the market space you're looking at getting into, there's opportunity to not only find the right printer for the market um, that you're interested in, but we've wrapped the education around. I think that's a big part of what we're doing here and it's a big part of what the industry is looking for. We recently hired, uh, some of you may be familiar uh, on the wide format side, Mark Rugen, 
uh, owner of GiveMeHelp.com. Uh, he does a lot of work with the uh, OEMs. He's exclusively tied to, or was exclusively tied with, SAI, the software manufacturer for Flexi on the sign side. So we hired him, it started with Muto last week, and what we're gonna be doing is taking the printing technology that we have, and we're gonna be pushing out more uh, uh, training and education programs, everything from entry-level printing, how to get the most out of your printer, tips and tricks on service and maintenance, to different applications. So we'll be utilizing five uh, remote uh, learning facilities that we have across the country, and Mark will be taking advantage of educating customers, dealers, and the market space. And, awesome, so yeah. looking into the camera, yep. let the people out there know why they should be doing business with Muto. Uh, they should be doing business with Muto. We've been around longer than anyone else um, in the industry as far as wide format. We have products that satisfy uh, the opportunities for anyone looking at getting into different markets. Uh, from the traditional graphic side to specialty printing on UV, uh, dye sublimation, which is a, a huge opportunity. If you look around, most of the signage that you're seeing here at the shows is being produced on fabrics now. So dye sublimation and textile printing is, is very exciting. Um, so those are just opportunities we have to provide not only the equipment, but again, the, the service and the training packages along with it. So we can help you get into the business, understand it, and help you to be successful with it. Thank you so much. and. As always, thank you so much for your support of the Printiverse. Love it. You've been with us for the, forever. Forever. You're, you've, you're a six P. Unlike, here. don't even start with the, with the <laughs> Patriots. Don't even start. You're lucky I'm letting a Boston person in my boots. Don't even start. Don't even start. No dollar. Don't even start with me. Okay, but thank, thank you, you so much for 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 everything you do. Appreciate Seriously, it. really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve from Pitney. Come on down. The price is right. What do you win? You won already. You get to be on the pound. You get to be interviewed with me. You, you won the, the, the prize. What are you talking about? What do you win? It's already happened. You're here. We need to adjust the microphone up, though. So we've or never I met, a, I mean, besides before. I mean, the, my usual guys, my usual peoples are right there, Patty and Kevin and Marifar. So um, again, another. Veteran Alliance Company, Pitney Bowes, thank you so much for your support. Um, I actually work with you guys at Drupa as well, so we've gone international, um, and that makes me very happy. And um, Pitney Bowes, I'm a little obsessed with your Engage One video, so I hope we can talk about that a little. Sure. Um, but uh, to start, why, do you love it? You don't love it? Of course it? I love it. Oh, uh, is he not the engaged one guy? He is the engaged one guy? <laughs> I am not the engaged one guy. All right, well, guy. I don't get technical. I just think it's really cool. Well, that's good. I just want, I want it to use it. So, we, we, okay, we'll get to that. Why don't you tell everybody what you do at Pitney Bowes and why you're here if you're not here to talk about Engage One Video, which I is making me cry right now. I was concerned when you said right veteran. I thought you was referring to my gray hair. No, I have gray hair, too. Yeah. Talk into that. So, there. I'm the uh, director of product management for our production print products. So, the uh, IntelliJet, family of printing systems. That can we, you guys hear him? No, they can't hear you, my friend. How's that? Good. So I'm responsible for our production print products, which includes the uh, IntelliJet family of printing systems that we've partnered with uh, HP on, uh, as well as the Acelljet printing and finishing system, which we're uh, showing in our booth this week. Okay, so Inkjet. Inkjet, inkjet. yes. Okay, we can talk about Inkjet, because I love about Inkjet. Video. We can talk about anything. Okay, I mean, we... let's talk about Inkjet, though, because sure. Um, really, this show is Inkjet Wars, really, in a lot of ways. Now, you guys are a bit different because you don't manufacture your own machines, but your customers are Inkjet users and, and you are Inkjet uh, technologists, so Absolutely, to speak. Absolutely, yes. So, what are you finding the sweet spot is as far as the people bu buying your equipment? Is it heavy mail stuff, direct mail stuff? I mean, you yeah. guys are the direct mail experts. Sure. So, as uh, you know, Pitney Bowes, one of our prime focuses is on first class and also direct mail. So uh, most of our customers are doing transactional bills and statements, policies, uh, and also direct mail as well. So it's, it's a mix. And what we're seeing um, a lot of our traditional customers who may have focused solely on transactional are now bringing in other work, uh, direct mail work, to supplement that work. And also, as we uh, increase the variability of these applications, um, particularly on the direct mail side, they start to require the same level of integrity um, that we provide on the first class mailing material. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting evolution as um, 
people who are bringing different work in to, uh, to use on the systems. Uh, are you finding that the um, shops that are incorporating this technology need to um, change their workflow in any manner? I don't think so because it's, uh, they've traditionally come out of a data-driven environment. Um, I think what we do see is uh, customers need to think a little bit more about um, design. Uh, they need to understand certainly at minimum the basics about color, uh, but also the more they know about color management and um, allows them to really take the best use of the systems they have. Because what we're trying to tell customers to do is find that balancing act between economics, which right. everything is driven by, and aesthetics. Right. Um, and you know, really focus on how you bring the most to the customer at the most affordable price. Right. So, do you? I mean, just you know, we're just having a conversation. Mm -hmm. Do you think that trans promo is ever going to really catch on? I mean, I see a huge opportunity for it, but it just does not seem to be. People are not wisely util utilizing their partnerships and making money off their bills and statements. Yeah, I, I think the challenge is um, connecting the systems that drive uh, variability from a promotional standpoint with the systems that drive um, the transaction environments. Right. And also the willingness to do it. It's not a question of can you make the technology align and there's ways to do it. And quite honestly, there are some customers out there that are doing a fantastic job of blending the two together. Um, but it requires a will. Right. And I think the challenge is, uh, you know, the people that make investment decisions from a marketing standpoint, if it's not mobile or internet-based, um, it's a distraction to them. Right. And um, they really need, somebody needs to have a focused energy and effort to really link those two worlds together. And I think that's the bigger, bigger challenge. It's not the technology. It's uh, the yeah, will no, to do it. Right, I mean, it's always been there, and I would think that, you know, if anyone could convince people that it's a viable opportunity for, to make, for them to make money on their own print, it's Pitney Bowes, for God's sakes, you're, you're talking to them. Absolutely, and you know, what we find with um, our customers are using, um, you know, our location intelligence software. Right. And, um, you know, addressing their customers via whatever channel they want. When they combine direct mail or more targeted um, marketing on paper, with the electronic messaging, um, the uplift is, is that much Absolutely, higher. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and really, we should be able to address our customers through whatever means um, is comfortable for them. Um, and also, from a multi-channel standpoint, to really be able to get the maximum effect. Right, so can look into the camera and let the people at home and the people who can hear you know why they should stop by the Pitney booth and also why they should contact somebody, look at your website, go to a demo, go to your print chat, which is uh, Marifa, Precision, I've got the name of Power Precision Print Chat. You're still doing those, right? They're amazing, by the way. That's the only uh, Twitter chat I'm jealous of. Marifa uh, started that one. So just give, give people a reason why they should, I mean, I like you guys, but everyone should know why I like you. Sure, I, I think there's multiple reasons to come visit us in the booth. Um, and it really spans all the product families we have. So uh, the Epic inserting system, uh, which we're celebrating this week, the 100th uh, system we've sold in two years, um, remarkable launch, um, really focused about delivering to customers um, productivity. You know, there's, a, there's often a focus on speed around everything, but really yeah. it's productivity. It's what can you get out the most amount in the shortest amount of time yeah. and then most cost effectively. So we're celebrating that with Epic. We won a must see award. Uh, fantastic technology for quick changeovers um, as customers are changing between applications, which is something we see more and more as we're doing a lot of mixed work in these shops. Uh, Epic is a great solution. Um, we're showing the Acceljet printing and finishing system which is really targeted for customers that are transitioning from you know, a cut sheet, monochrome toner world with pre-printed forms into the world of inkjet. Uh, it's affordable, uh, it delivers great volume for customers that are in the small to mid-range market, um, and it's a great solution. And we're introducing a new finishing solution for that uh, as well this week. We have our pulse inserting system, which is again right-sized, um, really targeted to help customers move from very costly, very labor-intensive manual work to moving that over to a more automated platform that takes advantage of all the integrity that Pitney Bowes built into the system. So a lot of good people in the booth to talk about um, 
really how do we improve your business? It's not so much about products. It's really more about where are you now, where are you trying to get to, right. and um, either through process or product, how do we get you um, right. to a more profitable space? And that's exactly what the purpose of these interviews are, are so that people can understand who are the people that they want to move forward to Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Um, so we didn't touch upon it, but go on the internet, look at Engage One Video, and everyone get it so that I can watch you and and uh, and talk about it, and uh, or somebody in Pitney Bowes, give it to me, I'm begging you, I need, I want Engage One Video. I must have personalized video. I must have it. Please, please, please. Your little interface. Technology. I love it. Maybe I should be your product manager. But okay. thank you so much thank for your you, time. Deborah. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much to Pitney Bowes, Marifar, as always. Thank you so much. And I'm going to call up Joe and Tony and um, Mark from uh, Docket Manager. Did the, everyone else leave? Is it just you now? Okay, just Joe. There's stairs on this side. Oh, you're good. Joe Kern, everybody, from Docket Manager. Deborah. Oop, I shouldn't do that. Sorry, sound guy. Sorry, sound guy. I don't want to get in trouble with the sound guy. No, they got an urgent phone call that the booth was oh, geez. insane, so okay. they had to, had to go back a little bit. Okay, Joe. Yep. First time Alliance member. Yeah. Long time excited. caller. Yep. Makes me very happy uh, <laughs> to have you here. I'm um, ecstatic to be here. What I would say is that you are the first MIS company up here. So ah. you are the first of many <laughs> to come up here. Um, I would definitely say my alliance is stacked on the software side this mm -hmm. year because quite frankly, um, talking to all the printers out there, there are, um, that is on the top list of the things that they care about. Um, automation, what makes their life simpler, easier? How can they make more money, lean practices, right. and then, um, just a general optimization. So why don't you tell people a little bit about what you do about Docket Manager and how you're helping printers solve these uh, sort of automation, MIS, scheduling stuff. Sure. Um, stuff, I'm not technical. Can you guys hear me okay? Stuff. Fine, okay. Uh, Docket Manager, first of all, I'm the sales manager at Docket Manager. Okay. We're a, uh, <laughs> it's Sorry. cuddly. No, okay. that's fine, He's cuddly. my friend. Um, it's a uh, London, Ontario based firm, so we're out of Canada. We have offices in Chicago as well. Um, we're a fully integrated SaaS model MIS system, so it's uh, anywhere you have access to the internet, uh, you can access our MIS and our web to print. Yeah, it's a great system because we've developed it to also be responsive, so you don't need a, a uh, separate app or anything like that to access it. Okay. Um, the system, a uh, lot of our, our clients are using it uh, in their print shops on tablets, so they're doing shop floor data collection, they're not having to worry about workstations or uh, uh, you know different laptops throughout. They're, um, they're utilizing it on tablets, so they're doing that shop floor data collection. It is completely integrated web to print all the th way through accounts receivable, um, and it's, in my estimation, one of the cleanest interfaces out there and one of the uh, fastest growing MISs around. It, it's exciting. Why do you think that um, printers are taking, I don't want to say suddenly, but it seems like an overwhelmingly a uh, large amount of them are switching their focus now to software and, and uh, product workflow. I think it's about being effective and productive and profitable, and they're realizing, like I still talk to many people that um, when they're putting together work orders or dockets, they're still doing it by hand, an alarming number of people. Uh, I spoke with a gentleman the other day who uh, receives orders from the web and then hand writes his dockets and then they go into QuickBooks and then they go back for approval before it actually goes into the shop and it, it's an exorbitant amount of money and time that's being wasted. Uh, so I think printers are really looking for ways to optimize what they're doing in their shops. Uh, lower overhead in the very beginning so it can be much more higher uh, profit on the back end. So I think it's really about saying, hey, I need to automate as much as I can. And it's gotta be an automation all the way from the complete front end down to the back end. So um, they're looking at systems, I think, that are, are, you know, if they're doing online portals and web to print, what they should be doing. Uh, it's something that's gonna be the least amount of touch points throughout the whole process. 
Are you aligned with any of the manufacturers in here? Uh, we do have uh, some manufacturers that we're aligned with, uh, and we have more that are actually, uh, we're in uh, talks with them. Uh, I know we're looking at uh, doing some integrations with uh, Xerox and their systems. We are talking with Rico as well now too. Um, so uh, we're looking at a lot of the systems out there to help the whole automated system or the whole automated process all the way through uh, from again where the order comes through, through shop management, right. through integrations with various presses and, and digital presses. Right. So. Um, just as a tip, a tip situation, mm -hmm. um, what is one way that a printer could look at their current workflow and say, this is one way I can improve right now, whether I buy a software technology or not? I think it's really all about the time spent in the front end. I mean, um, you know, how much time do you spend estimating a job? How much time do you spend then converting that estimate over into uh, a work order and getting it into the shop, what you really want to do is you want to be as efficient as you can be, um, as productive and as accurate as you can be. So eliminating a lot of that time and a lot of that overhead uh, is going to increase your profits because you're, you're really just, you know, I, I talk to so many people that are just, they're so heavy in that front end and the amount of time it takes, even just invoicing a job. It's, it's, it's ridiculous sometimes looking at the whole invoice process when printers are telling me they're taking 15, 20, 30 minutes per invoice um, and they're doing you know hundreds upon some possibly thousands of invoices in a month. I mean, when it comes to billing as a print customer, I'm like, whatever, don't, you don't have to send me the bill fast. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to estimating, I never, still don't understand why I have to wait so so long for an estimate. So, you right. know, we're, we're on opposite, you know, right. kind of mm -hmm. uh, thinking of the same in the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there, there are certain places immediately you can save time. And it seems like Most estimation definitely. and billing are, are certainly two of them. So looking into the camera, looking mm -hmm. to everyone who's not here, okay. tell them why they should go to your website, why they should watch your website, webinars, why they should show up, uh, sign up for your newsletter, why they should be in the Joe Kern business. And also, you're a Canadian company. And yes. we know how the Americans are. We mm -hmm. like to do, deal with our Americans. So tell them why it's okay. It's okay to be nice to the Canadians. <laughs> tell, well, tell them why. I'm actually a U.S. citizen and I'm part of our <laughs> Chicago office. So we do have offices in Chicago mm -hmm. as well. So it's okay to deal with mm -hmm. Chicago. But uh, Canadians are, are really some of the, from what I'm learning from the company, they're some of the most um, dedicated, fastest moving people that I've seen. Uh, our, our software company, we have, uh, we're putting out software sprints every three to five weeks of improving the product, of making it better, making it more effective, listening to our clients. Uh, so out of all the software companies I've dealt with over time, the Canadian ones just seem to move fast I don't know if that's just this company or not, uh, but you know that's what I've noticed. And Docket Manager, uh, I tell this to many people, I've been in the printing industry for 30 years, a plus, 30 years plus. Uh, we're a company that has been uh, uh, developed, we are printers developed by, uh, the software developed by printers, about 85% of our staff have worked in the printing industry for many, many years. So we know what your pains are, uh, we know what you need, and it's just a, a great product to be able to um, uh, help printers. So uh, it, the one thing I tell everybody is if I was back in print production again, this is a software I'd want because it would make printing fun again, I think, for me. Yeah, make I would print, enjoy it. Make printing fun again. I like that. Hashtag make print fun again. I freaking that love that. TM, I'm TMing that for the Printiverse right now. Joe, thank you so much. Well, I know that you, you had a large um, impact in uh, getting your company involved in the mm -hmm. uh, alliance. Joe is a loyal veteran print chatter. We, he comes to print chat every um, Wednesday at 4 o'clock Eastern time. So I really I, just thank you so thank much. You. And if I could do just one quick commercial. If you're not doing print chat on Wednesdays, shame on you. You need to be there. Ask Deb about it. It is one of the most amazing hours that I spend during the week. So please, please, if you're not sure what Print Chat is, ask Deb, find out about it. It really is worth its hour of time. Thank so, you so much, Joe. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh.
two words I have been waiting to say for the last 45 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Dollar. From Rico, but I just like saying Brian Dollard. Dollard! I can't hug you, my sound guy's been Awesome. I'm fantastic, and please um, don't mind the aliens. Here. It's a little crowded, but we'll make it work. So, so let's how just. How many millions are online? Uh, how many millions are online? Yeah. 20 billion. Uh, 20 billion dollars. 20 billion people. 20 billion people are online. You know, like Dr. Dr. Evil? Evil? Yeah, okay. I love Dr. Evil. Yes, you are Dr. Evil. Okay, Brian Dollard. First of all, I want to thank you so much for supporting um, the Printiverse this year. Absolutely. As well, I want to personally thank you for supporting Deborah Korn. Or you will be, and so leave the checkbook before right. you leave. I will support <laughs> you, but I'll also say I hope everything's going all right for you in Florida. Thank you, that is that is actually a good point. Uh, shout out to the Florida people, shout out, um, you hey. know, a uh, lot of stuff going on in Florida. My mom and I live in Florida. There's a category three hurricane going over our house, but you know, here we are. Well, way to bring it down, Dollard. We were, we were all happy, and now you're, just, you're talking about hurricanes and stuff. Oh, buzzkill. So let's talk about something positive. All right. Rico. Take a look at Rico. Why should people, first of all, tell everybody what you're doing at Rico, and then let's talk about why we should be taking a look at Rico. Okay, great. So um, I'm the Director of Strategic Planning and Business Development at Director of Strategic Planning and Business Development at RICO, uh, and that's in our commercial and our newly formed, I should say, commercial and industrial printing uh, business group. Um, and part B of that question was, why should they be taking a look at RICO? So, yes. you know, you're going to see our theme at the show is take a look at RICO, and and there's there's purpose behind that. The purpose is, you're going to see an organization that's very different than what it was even a year ago, but certainly uh, a number of years ago. Um, and what we're seeing, and, and it really speaks to the formation of that commercial and industrial printing business group. Um, uh, we've seen a lot of uh, core technologies that have been developed at RICO, uh, large part of, in large part uh, inkjet, but not limited to just inkjet. Uh, but we've seen a lot of those technologies go off in a lot of different directions. So when you go into the RICO booth, you're going to hear us talking about uh, uh, inkjet printing uh, on continuous form. We've actually got two systems set up there running, uh, printing a wide variety of applications from commercial print to transactional on coded paper, uncoded paper. But that same core inkjet technology is also being applied in different ways. So you go to our wide format space uh, and you'll see a couple of different applications of that technology, uh, some from RICO, others not from RICO. Uh, so we partnered with the FI and you're going to see a uh, a hybrid solution there, roll, flat, roll fed and flatbed uh, inside the system. Um, and, uh, but it goes even beyond that further. Everybody's familiar with our 7100 series where we have the fifth station. Uh, we originally came out with uh, white toner and clear toner, then followed that with a yellow neon. We're now launching a, a, a pink neon. And we're showing at the booth as well uh, uh, something I'm pretty excited about. It's a UV red security toner. Huh? Uh, yeah. So. It, this is really cool. You got to get to the booth to see this, um, and you know you talk about well, what is what's the purpose of security toner? It's to prevent counterfeiting. In the United States, it costs us up to about six hundred billion dollars annually. The the price of counterfeiting of all kinds. I, I think I, you heard me talk about an instance with the NFL. I'm, I'm coming back to my beloved Patriots. Just be careful! <laughs> Don't say the Patriots in my booth. Mine's bigger. So yeah, it is bigger. It is bigger. <laughs> Uh, um, but uh, there, was a, there was a circumstance two years ago at the Super Bowl 50, I believe it was, where up to $39 million was earned on counterfeit Super Bowl tickets. And the NFL and the FBI caught the people and, and, and they're in jail. And, and the, so the good news was they caught the people. And they caught them because the NFL has all sorts of resources. So I'm not going to feel sorry for them for two very important reasons. The first one, they have the money, they have the relationships with the, with the NFL, uh, with the FBI, and they caught these people. The other reason is they're 
terrible treatment of my beloved Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time. <laughs> but we'll set that aside, won't we? Yes, we'll set that very far aside. Back to your booth in two seconds. Did I mention stop Super Bowl it. winning New England Patriots? I did. Okay. Uh, anyways, um, but that was a good example of where it hit clo hits close to home for us. But the NFL has a lot of resources to prevent that type of counterfeiting. You know, when you think of all the things that you see on a day-to-day -day basis in the communities that we live in, you know, we've all gone and gotten a gift certificate, uh, a ticket to an event, a gift card, all these things that you get printed locally. And, and as printers, we look at it and say, oh my gosh, well, you know, we, could, we could print these things all day long. Um, what this UV toner has done, it's really brought it's made that technology, that security, that type of security, uh, very accessible in the local community. So your commercial printer could have a very different type of conversation uh, with, the, with, with their customers or members of their community that really have nothing to do with printing. It has to do with getting into their business and helping them prevent those types of losses. And from their perspective, it's very simple. This is just a different toner. Yeah. You don't have to do anything different. So we're demonstrating that in the booth, and I'd encourage everybody to get over there. 2022? Yeah. Okay. Um, we'd encourage everybody to get over there and, and take a look at it, because what, what, it, what you'll see is images that are printed, whether it's a ticket or, 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 or a, a diploma or, or something, um, and you're not going to see that toner but with the naked eye. But if you put it under a UV light, all of a sudden an image will appear, whether it's a number, an image, it could be anything. Um, and the, the real advantage of this is for someone, uh, for, for a local business that perhaps does gift certificates, all it takes is a little handheld UV light, little flashlight, flash it on there. The, if that image doesn't pop up, you now have a counterfeit uh, gift certificate or a ticket or whatever it is. So that's, to me, I talk about it a lot, but I, to me, that's yeah, one of the things that's really about exciting. It a lot. All right, I'll stop. Okay. Okay, so. But it's good. It's it's interesting. I don't want you to feel bad. I'm interested. You just hurt in my it. feelings. No, I didn't mean to hurt that's, your feelings. I'm, I'm, well, I'm inconsolable. The suck, but that's okay. Okay. Um, what I want to talk to you about is, um, what do, does Rico have a persona as far as like the printers that you think your equipment is is right for, right right on the money? Well, that's actually a really good question. Um, I I think over time, that's evolved. Over time, that's evolved. Uh, you know, we've had, um, you know, Rico's done very well on the transactional side. You know, really a uh, market share leader in that space. They've also done very well uh, over the years in the implant, uh, uh, also in the small to mid-sized commercial printers. But the way the product of, uh, uh, portfolio and, and it has evolved in recent years, uh, it, it, we're really targeting the large commercial printers in recent years, and 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 so. From our perspective, we see it as a really broad application of a lot of different technologies. It's those core technologies that we've just engineered in a lot of different directions that enables us to have a much broader conversation in the marketplace. I mean, Rico is like, um, one of the reasons I really like Rico is because you're like the, um, you're like an understated um, selling thing. Like you're out there, lots of presses are moving around, but you're not like, you know, advertising the numbers, so to speak. You're almost, it's like your customers are almost like in the closet, you know, Rico users, so to speak. <laughs> but um, they're, they're, it seem, there seems to be more talk now. Um, and Rico's elevating in those conversations with the other brands that you more associate with in the inkjet world. So um, I'm looking forward to, to more from you, you guys uh, from that. and. Uh, Again, look into the camera and tell everybody at home why they should take a look at Rico. Visit your website, go to your webinars, see your demos, sign up for your newsletter, all the stuff that you're doing. Why should they be on Team Rico? Uh, again, good question. Just, you know, come on. We, that, that's why we say take a look at Rico, because we think it's very different than it has been historically. Uh, we've taken a much more prominent position at this event this year. Uh, and we see, we, we feel that our technologies and, you know, and it's not just about the technologies and the products. There, there's some depth to the bench here at, at, at Rico. And one of the things that really struck me, I'm actually new to the company, as you're aware, just been there a few months. What's really struck me is the depth of talent in terms of professional services. Uh, th there's depth there, but there's breadth to it, covering a lot of different areas that aren't typically covered by companies in our industry. So they're going far and wide as well as deep from a, uh, you know, 
from a resource standpoint, and you know, I've said it a million times, I'll say it again, you know, speeds and feeds don't solve problems in this industry. It's people that solve problems. And that's probably our greatest asset. All of that is on display over there. Come look at us. If you're not here, go to our website. We've got some landing pages that you can take a look at as well. It's and to your point, I think Rico's been one of the better kept secrets in the industry That's in recent what I'm years. That's what my job is. It's That's going to change. It's time to not it's make it over. a secret anymore. And I've got I mean, you by my side. We'll do this together, Deb. Awesome. I'm all in. Right. You know I'm in. All thank right. you. Seriously, thank, thank you so you. much. Always I was telling Tracy, this was my easiest yes I ever got with Rico. So thank you so much. Right, and I look for, forward to harassing you for a long, 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 long time. Um, so, Kelly Malazzi. Kelly Malazzi. We actually have a little extra time, so I'd like you to come up here. I'm gonna, um, as long as we're talking about movers and shakers, I wanna talk a little, uh, let some of the booth people who are working with us come up and have a, have a minute to, because um, I've recruited some top level talent uh, in this booth. So Kelly, have a seat um, very quickly. Um, and Sandy, you're gonna be coming up and Craig and Jamie's not here, but we'll get him in a second. Um, okay, Kelly Malazzi. Sales coach to the stars. Oh, wow. Uh, tell uh, everybody a little bit about what you do and how I managed to bribe you to work in the Printiverse. Oh, well, I've been a big fan of Deb Corns <laughs> since the minute I laid eyes on this magnificent creature. Oh, creature. Um, and I'm so like impressed by how much the Printiverse has changed over the last six years, evolved, yes. developed, gotten so huge. Thank you. Um, and so what I do is I try to help all printers sell more, make more money, and be more successful as it pertains to sales and marketing. So, And do you work with um, manufacturers, as, like with customer events? And yeah. like could, could Brian Dollard bring you in to speak to his customers, for example, about how to sell more Rico print and to different people? And yeah, like definitely. I mean, I've, I just, just making a connection. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Again, any, everything, everything I do is about trying to deepen the experiences that printers and manufacturers have with each other, with the customers, with the end users, with everybody. So I kind of come at it from a little bit of a different perspective, I think. I think I, I kind of try to really develop more of the human side of sales and try to encourage people to be more authentic in their relationships and try to stay as connected as they possibly can with people just because it's hard today. I think salespeople are struggling. I think companies are struggling to get good salespeople. I think they're struggling to help their salespeople. I think it's just a, it's a really challenging time for printers out there. Um, and I do have the experience of having worked with some of the manufacturers, so I understand how what the challenges are of them helping their end users. You know, you sell a piece of equipment and then you want them to be successful. So how can the manufacturers help the salespeople, help the companies be more successful? Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed, I write a blog for Deb. I, I just try to come at it from a different kind of more human standpoint, And I you're guess. also, um, you've been a long-standing pr printing impressions blogger. Yeah. Uh, she has a, a, a blog on printing impressions. And one of the reasons why I, you, you do write for my site, and one of the reasons why I invited you here is because of that human approach that you have. Um, anybody who spends five minutes with me knows that I, I don't really like salespeople because they're, I'm a print customer and I've just been bar bar you know, berated by salespeople my entire life and I can smell a pitch a mile away. It doesn't <laughs> matter what the smile is or you know, how it's being disguised. I know where it's getting to. And you, you change that. You change that approach. You make it human. Uh, I honestly think that uh, your blogs get a lot of attention on my site. Uh, certainly one of the more popular printing impressions bloggers. And I think everybody appreciates your authenticity because um, the Kelly that you read is also the Kelly that you meet. And that is not always the case in this industry. So uh, thank you so much for, um, for, for helping us. And um, everybody out there, how can they get in touch with you? I'm, I'm so glad to be here. So you can find me on Twitter at Success in Print. Um, I have, you can find me on email. But most importantly, if you want to have a conversation, if you want to find out how I can help you or just ask me any questions, pick my brain for free while I'm here. You're more than invited to do that. 
um, and and we'll we'll figure out how I can help you and and what you need. So that's really awesome. Just, just come find me. <laughs> One thing, Kelly doesn't have business cards, which she will be wah, scolded wah. for. She will be scolded for uh, pretty much every time I see her. So I'm in the middle of a rebranding, people. Yes. I'm working on a new website. I'm trying to evolve. I'm so happy to be here. I'm happy to be away from my four small children yes. and uh, be back in the shy. I miss Chicago so much. Yeah, she's from Chicago. I miss it so much. So. Well, thank you so much. Thank I really you. appreciate it. You're the best. Yay! Craig, come on up here. Because as long as you're, this, this is the, uh, Craig is the designer of our International Print Day poster. And what I forgot to mention was that Rico printed those for us. And they're actually fantastic. Can I have one, please? I'll just borrow one for a second. Thank you. There, oh, thank you. Um, this, have a seat, please. This, um, interna this is the first year we actually came up with an International Print Day poster. And um, International Print Day is 24 hours of social media sharing uh, to help print trend the planet. Uh, this year, we have the, uh, we always use the hashtag IPD for International Print Day in the year. But this year, um, our theme is the print experience because we believe that that is, the, that is the essence of print that separates it from the rest of the other um, mediums. Yes, you can have a digital experience. Yes, you can have a, just a print experience. But to have bro both, you need the piece of print. And um, Craig, very, very tr uh, on relevant topic point, use the smiley face icons in this. And um, a company named Miralupa is going to create an augmented reality experience for this poster. It is currently active. If you scan this poster, you download the Throughbox app and you scan this poster, you will get a, 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 an AR experience and a temporary message until the real experience launches on the 18th of October, which is International Print Day. But this is Craig, the designer, um, Craig Bauer from Designs That Rock. And uh, first of all, this thing is a work of art. Everybody has been complimenting it. It's already making the rounds in Canada, as I told you. Um, Rico did a fantastic job of printing it. But first of all, thank you so much for, for this poster. It has just elevated the holiday that we made up, by the way, at Print Chat. Um, which is now recognized by the government because the Capitol building last year chimed in for International Print Day and showed us the, picture, the tickets, the printed tickets that they use for tours in the, for on into, uh, uh, in the Capitol building and said, Happy International Print Day. So I took it as the government recognized my holiday. So, um, but you actually have a really cool job. Tell everybody what you do and why your company is called Designs That Rock. Uh, so my, my background has always been, even though I'm a designer, I started off in package design. Um, so my years were spent doing uh, a lot of pre-press work, working with you know color and images and rips and processors and everything related to print. So my, my background in design is really all based on printing. So I target, you know, the customers I work with, I target based on my print skills. So I'm really out selling design and branding and marketing to support initiatives that my customers are doing um, and I'm heavily involved with selling them print. But you, you also target music, right? I do. Um, I, I started off targeting musicians and bands, um, you know, about nine years ago, really finding out there's not a whole lot of money in that, right. in that market. Um, so uh, I've done some work with some, some pretty well-known people, but um, I've actually found shifting more, working with nonprofits and other organizations right. that, that can find more value. Right, so we have, uh, we still have Rico sitting in the booth. So mm -hmm. just in general, not, not directed at them, but how can, do you think the manufacturers can do, uh, do a better job in educating the designers on the, on the technologies that are out there for them to make their designs come to life? I think the manufacturers spend a lot of time dropping, dropping language that talks about you know the, the fifth deck and adding this and putting this in there and it's all these tech words that frankly the end customer doesn't really care about right I mean we, my customer doesn't care if I go in and I'm talking about oh I've got the latest new Rico printer that does this 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 or whatever they don't care they want to know what what's the outcome for them are they gonna sell more are they gonna make more connections is there is their piece going to serve their needs 
Um, so I think in my, my experience, the language needs to change in how uh, manufacturers talk to designers um, because it's, there's a disconnect. There, yeah, there, there is. There's still a disconnect there. And um, how can people get in touch with you uh, about to learn about your design services and maybe just have more conversations with you about uh, helping um, sure. customers understand about print because you kind of bridge that gap. Right. Um, you can find me on social media, pretty much any channel at Design That Rocks. Um, and I'll be hanging around the Printiverse the next few days, Yay. and I'll be at the show um, as well. So. And Craig is also a loyal uh, print chatter. Are you going to start seeing a pattern of that? Um, I mean, the print chatters are the best and the brightest, so that's who I'm going to tap into, obviously, to, um, to be in the booth and uh, participate in these conversations. We have Jamie McClellan back there, and he's actually, um, I've imported him to, uh, he's a printer, and he's going to man printers row and uh, be asking questions of the panels. But um, this panel's over now, so I just want to thank you so much. Sandy, we'll, okay. we'll hit you tomorrow and the rest of the people that we didn't get. But um, stay tuned. Um, what is next? Dr. Joe is next. Yay. So Dr. Joe will be here at 145. And there's coffee uh, that everybody can partake in over on the side there. Sorry I didn't mention that to begin with. Uh, but thank you so much for joining us for our first session. Thank you so much, Craig. Absolutely. And we will be back, everybody. Thanks again.